30 years, I've been DOT once. But I think a lot of it has to do with the way I keep my equipment. As soon as the truck comes in, it gets serviced, no matter what. So, Troy, we're standing here at, uh, at Wildwood, uh, in Wildwood, at the second five chrome shop. And a lot of guys, they, uh, they give me a hard time because they say I don't have enough Kenworth on the channel. So, we're standing here in front of your, your beautiful, you know, KW. Tell me about what you got here. I've got a 2019 Kenworth W900L. It's got the uh, Cummins X15 in it. I mean, other than that, it's pretty much a stock truck. Besides adding fenders, lights, breather lights, steering wheel, um, of course the trailers to match that I've done with matching fenders and all on that too. Obviously we've done the bumper to a 20 inch uh, with the 45 miters. Whose bumper is that? That is Valley's. Okay. Valley Products. Um, we've gone in, we've done the JW speaker headlights okay. with the heaters. I didn't really want a bug shield, but I wanted the little thin ones. Yeah. So we've done that. Do you find those effective? No. <laughs> They're for looks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they do help a little bit, yeah. but not much. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, we put Centromatics all the way around the truck okay. and painted the front ones to match since they popped through the wheels. Okay. Um, we've taken the stock visor and we've chopped it. Okay. So we lowered it down slammed it to the windshield a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Paint, painted it to match. Now, why'd you decide to, to modify the stock visor? Well, everybody's putting on, you know, the big the big visors. Uh -huh. I wanted something different. Uh -huh. So, there is a company, um, I'm trying to think of the name of it now, but they sell a kit for that. Okay. So, I bought the kit from them, and then we, of course, you have to cut the sides a little bit to lower it. Okay. But other than that, I mean, it's a pretty simple deal to do. Okay. The kit alone, I think, it was 120 bucks for the kit. Yeah, it's a nice little modification. And I'm trying to remember the name of it. I can't think right, of the maybe, name. It'll, maybe it'll come back to you, or maybe somebody <laughs> in the comments will know what it is. Right. What else you got going here on the truck? Uh, pretty much, we put the chops on the windows, the six-inch chops. Okay. Uh, what's coming up? We're going to be doing all the sleeper panels. Okay. On it, which I'm going to try and get with it. S and H tubes since they're in my back door. This here was bought here at 75 Chrome Shop. Right. Uh, we added that probably about three or four months ago. Yeah. And pretty simple, easy cool. to easy to put in. You know, we try and keep it simple. I painted the dash. Okay. Uh, painted a few things in there. You know, up top CB, all that's painted to match the truck. That's nice. It's a light up shifter. And I wanted something different because everybody just puts their own knob on it. Yeah. That's two knobs in one. Really? Yeah. That was actually one of those spiked, you know, uh, shifters. Okay. And then I took, cut the spike off and we put the ball on top of it, uh -huh. drilled it and threaded it. So, you know, just a little bit different. You get a little bit of light that shines up through that red ball too. Really? That's a nice touch. <laughs> 18 inch deep box. So it's a, it's a pretty hefty box. Yeah. And you can put a lot of uh, a lot of equipment in there. Right. A lot of put stuff. Put your tarps, chains, binders, right. all that. Barbecue grill. Right. <laughs> if you want to yeah. roll around with a barbecue They've grill. All, they also made my light bar and everything too, T.L. Woods did. Okay. You got some lights on the cross member, the tank cross member there? Right. Cool. And these here I made in-house, in you know, my bars and everything for okay. the Okay. Actually, the ones on the trailer used to be single humps on here. <laughs> okay. And we ended up taking the single humps off, cutting them, and then putting fulls on okay. the front. All right. So why do you make that switch? I had a hard time keeping the singles on the truck. They kept vibrating a lot, okay. working their way out and stuff. Um, to be honest, they, got, they were a pain. Yeah, makes sense. Well, it's costly too when they come loose and they blow your airbag. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be <laughs> on a, the side of the road. Yeah, that'll be a reason to, to uh, switch up. But. This is a 2020 Dorsey. It wasn't ordered; it was already painted red, so okay. it sort of matched the truck. Nothing really custom about it besides the fenders. We just wanted something that was, you know, going to look good behind the truck. We added all the uh, three-quarter inch lights. Okay. Um, and then we put the axle light on the front axle. 
Okay. I said, of course, we've done the fenders on it. And we've added some lights back here, you know, because it's hard to see the back of your trailer. Yeah. So I was always looking for something a little bit further out, so we added these. Okay. Added strobes in the back for our oversized loads. Tell me about this gauge right here. Uh, I mean, I, it's probably self-explanatory, but... Right. That's your load gauge for your suspension on the trailer. Okay. So that'll tell me whether or not I'm overweight okay. or underweight, whichever way we go. How would a person read that? You know, what, what is it displaying? This is displaying right at 34 pounds. Okay. So 34 pounds on this would equal out to right at about 12,000 pounds per axle. When you get to a certain weight, like normally you're about 42, uh -huh. you'll be overweight. Got it. On, on one of the axles. All right. So when you're getting loaded, you can just stand, you know, walk around, kind of eyeball and see where, you know, where right. you want to be. Okay. And it's probably been a year and a half, two years since I've ever scaled this thing. <laughs> I've never, I've never scaled it. Yeah. So. All right, right on. I'm hauling Okanite cable reels. They're one of my main customers out of Richmond, Kentucky. I probably do between three and four of these loads a week. Yeah. Coming down to Florida? No, or, going all over. Okay. All we right. go all the way out to uh, California, Arizona. All right. What's right. your secret to, to keeping these things stable and locked in? The main thing is making sure that your coil racks are set up, you know, for the outside. Uh -huh. if, if Or right underneath of it. If you go with inside, you'll end up breaking the boards. Okay. I've seen that happen. And then, of course, always on your front, in your back, you always want two chains okay. pulling against each other. Right. You never want your chains on your single ones. You never want them pulling in a direction. You want them straight down. Straight down. So what are some of the things that you've seen going down the road or in pictures that guys have done wrong, in your opinion? Because we all know that there's, there's lots of ways to do things right and wrong. But right. what have you seen done the wrong way? Well, poor scarement for one. Uh, running straps, using straps on these. Mm -hmm. That's a no-no. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, not using the right chains or whatever because they, they all have a load rating. Mm -hmm. So if you don't use the right load rating on them, you can have problems. But to me, the shorter you go in your chains, the tighter that load's going to be. The longer you have your chain spanned out, you have a more chance of it breaking. What's your favorite part of this truck? Of this truck, yeah. it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes too, guys will say, "Well, it's paid off," but that's a favorite part too. I'm not trying to go there, but you know, I wish it was. Yeah. yeah hey, well, <laughs> you're getting there. I uh, wish it was, but no. I mean, believe it or not, it, I mean, this wasn't the truck I planned on buying. Okay. When I went to buy it, this is my first brand new one I've always bought used. Okay. But the first brand new one I've ever bought, I wanted something different. I love the, the uh, stripes on it, and you don't see those stripes a lot. Okay. So that's what really caught me on this one. Yeah, that's cool. So you weren't planning on buying it, but you saw it and you decided to have right. it kind of thing? Yeah, I went, I was actually looking at a lime green one that I okay. wanted to buy. So you upselled yourself? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> How long have you been trucking for and, you know, running a business for? I've been trucking for about 30 years. Okay. Um, the company is still pretty new. We're okay. about a year and a half, year and three quarter old. Okay. So, cool. And right now, I can't say it has been going bad because I'm up to three trucks now. That's awesome. So we're a small company, family owned. Uh -huh. um, I handpick all my drivers, so I know them before uh, before they really know that they're going to come work for me. That's good. That's good. So you keep an eye on, on folks and you know, right. and you can see how they are and how, you know, how they operate trucks, how they operate in another business. Right. And if that happens to come up, you, you already know the answer. You know? Exactly. So what do you tell them if, if you don't want them to drive for you? So how, how do you, it, they it, come to you? That's happened. That has so what happened. Do you, what do you tell them? I, I just told them, no, I can't. My trucks are full. Yeah. Eh, which is probably a true statement. But. Right. So I guess what that really means is, you know, we're, we're always watching. Right. We're, we're always, someone's always paying attention to how we you know drive down the road treat the equipment or, or whatever so exactly. I, i'd have to think that that you're always looking and paying attention to how, how guys are driving so, exactly. way, so it's not a hard decision when it's time to, to decide right they get treated the way i've treated mm -hmm. you know 
whatever I do to my trucks, they're more than welcome to do to theirs or I'll do it for them. So out of the, um, the 30 years of trucking, what are some of the high points? I would say trucking in the 90s. I've, you know, I've, I made good money then. It was a lot easier to get around. Yeah. And, uh, you know, DOT wasn't as bad as they are nowadays, but I mean, I've been lucky. I've 30 years, I've been DOT once. Wow. Uh, maybe maybe we shouldn't talk about that <laughs> because you got to leave here in the morning. We don't right. want to get a pull over. It is what it is. I mean, yeah. but I think a lot of it has to do with the way I keep my equipment. Yeah. You know, I do all my own in-house service and stuff like that. As soon as the truck comes in, it gets serviced mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I try and keep them up. You know, that keeps my cost down. So what's your claim to fame? You know, it could be non-truck related. It could be trucking related. So what's, what's your claim to fame there? I really don't know. I mean, my father wasn't in trucking, but he was in the trucking industry. He wasn't a trucker, he was a diesel mechanic. Okay. And I guess from him being a young kid, he would take me for rides in the trucks, and that's where I fell in love with trucks. But his words were, son, don't ever get into trucking. Hey, look where I'm at. <laughs> it's almost like, yeah, I mean, it's... I, I hear that a lot, and I, I think a lot of people have heard that a lot from their own parents and people in the industry and everything. It's almost like maybe there should be some reverse psychology going on because when that's said, it's almost like we end up in trucks anyway. You know? Right. So well, that's very cool, true. Though. So I mean, my father's been a big influence on me through the year. So yeah. he supported me. My mother has. My mother's actually my accountant. Oh, nice. Great. So you know, she does all the books and everything, yeah. and it's been working out great. That's awesome. Getting where you are now and your father seeing where you are now, what's his thoughts on what's going on with your business and everything? He said he couldn't be prouder. That's cool. I mean, he's, he's tickled to death to where I'm at now. That's awesome. So what do you got some plans from the future for the business? What are you, what are you thinking? Actually, yes. Um, I got two new drivers starting in January. And I'm actually getting out of my truck and putting a driver in mine. and. I'm going to be at home doing the dispatching now. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's, what are your, what's your true feelings on that? You know, what's your thoughts Dude, on that? I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared, to be yeah. honest. Oh, what, are you, um, what, are you, what are you thinking? I don't know. I mean, they're, all my drivers are taking bets on when I'm going to buy another truck <laughs> to get back out on the road. Yeah. I yeah. am going to start another company, though, while, okay. I'm, while I'm in there working, which this isn't mine. I bought that light bar, that T-bar. I'm actually building some light bars now that I built for my trucks. Okay. So I'm going to start a small company, Tyler's Creations, okay. in building light bars for the back of trucks. And we're going to do all different kind of light packages, okay. you know, stuff on recessed watermelons, okay. stuff like that on them. Uh, we'll do some different designs on them and stuff. But right now, I don't have the capability of doing the stainless. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all steel, painted to match the trucks. Okay. So what's your thoughts on stainless versus steel? Me personally, I love stainless, but one little flaw and it messes the whole piece up. My steel ones, I mean, they're solid. Yeah. They're solid, they're not gonna go anywhere. Let's walk up this way and get another look at the truck. You know, from, from this side, there's Mr. Mr. David over there on the forklift, <laughs> getting things done. Well, Troy, it's been a pleasure talking with you and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, thank you very much. All right, man.